نعم يعني حبذا لو بس ترفع صوتك قليل و على رسلك يا شيخ اللي كي يعني نكتب الفوائد ان شاء الله واللي كي نترجمها نسال الله يثيبكم ويجعل ميزان حسناتكم. طيب ان شاء الله. تفضل الحمد لله رب العالمين واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله. صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فمن نعمة الله سبحانه وتعالى علينا نعمة الإسلام والسنة قال ربنا في كتابه الكريم وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله وقال عز وجل في الآية الأخرى وإن تعدوا نعمة الله لا تحصوها إن الإنسان لظلوم كفار وقال سبحانه وتعالى أيضا ألم تروا أن الله سخر لكم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وأسبغ عليكم نعمه ظاهرة وباطنة فأبان ربنا سبحانه وتعالى في هذه الآيات المباركات أنه من علينا وأنعم علينا سبحانه وتعالى بنعم كثيرة ألا وإن من أجلها كما سمعتم نعمة الإسلام ونعمة السنة وهكذا بارك الله فيكم نعمة العلم النافع فإن الإنسان إذا تعلم العلم النافع يصير في خير عظيم وقد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم من يرد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين فأبان النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم أن من أراد الله له الخير وأراد به الخير فقهه في الدين نعم أيها الإخوة الكرام فإن العلم نعمة ويعتبر رفعة أيضا فإن الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول في كتابه الكريم يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات فالعلم رفعة وصاحب العلم يدرك الحق من الباطل والسنة من البدعة والهدى من الضلال ويعرف الصواب من الخطأ فأهل العلم هم الذين يضعون الأشياء في مواضعها قال ربنا سبحانه وتعالى ويرى الذين أوتوا العلم الذي أنزل إليك من ربك هو الحق ويهدي إلى صراط العزيز الحميد وقال سبحانه وتعالى أيضا وما يعقلها إلا العالمون وقال سبحانه وتعالى أيضا وليعلم الذين أوتوا العلم أنه الحق من ربك فدلت هذه الآيات أن الذي يتفقه في دين الله ويتعلم العلم الشرعي يصير في حياة وفي نور كما قال ربنا في كتابه الكريم أو من كان ميتا فأحييناه وجعلنا له نورا يمشي به في الناس فالعلم أيها الإخوة الكرام نور به كما سمعتم يدرك المسلم الحق من الباطل والسنة من البدعة والهدى من الضلال ويعرف بالعلم أيضا المحق من المبطل 
والسنية من البدعية وبالعلم أيضا تعرف العالم الصادق من غيره وتعرف العالم من الجاهل كل ذلك بسبب العلم فإن أعظم ما نوصي إخواننا حفظهم الله وكذلك أنفسنا بعد تقوى الله عز وجل والصدق والإخلاص والثبات على السنة التفقه في العلم والتفقه في شرع الله عز وجل فإننا أيها الأخوة الكرام نعيش في زمن كثرت فيه الفتن وكثرت فيه الفرق وصارت كل فرقة تدعي أنها على الحق فتقطعوا أمرهم بينهم زبرا كل حزب بما لديهم فرحون وصار حال هذه الفرق كما قيل وكل يدعي وصلا لليلى وليلى لا تقر لهم بذاك نعم أيها الإخوة وأصحاب الباطل يتظاهرون للناس بأنهم على حق ويأتون بباطلهم في صورة الحق وفي قالب الحق يا أهل الكتاب لما تلبسون الحق بالباطل وتكتمون الحق وأنتم تعلمون فصاحب الباطل لا يأتي إلى الناس بمظهر الباطل إنما يأتي بمظهر الحق ويأتي بالحق في قالب الباطل قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في شأن إبراهيم عليه السلام مع قومه قالوا أجئتنا بالحق أم أنت من اللاعبين وهكذا بارك الله فيكم هذا فرعون لعنه الله يتظاهر بأنه على حق قال سبحانه وتعالى في شأن فرعون أنه قال لقومه يا قوم ما أهديكم إلا زميل الرشاد وهكذا أيضا قال لقومه أنا ربكم الأعلى وقال أيضا إني إني أخاف أن يبدل دينكم أو أن يظهر في الأرض الفساد فهذا فرعون لعنه الله صور نفسه أنه البار الراشد وأن فرعون هو المفسد هكذا صور فرعون مع أن موسى عليه السلام هو البار الراشد وفرعون هو الكذاب المفتري فهكذا أصحاب الباطل يظهرون الباطل في قالب الحق ولكن مهما لبس أهل الباطل باطلهم لا بد أن يتضح ولا بد أن يظهر ولا بد أن يزيله الحق قال ربنا سبحانه بل نقذف بالحق على الباطل فيدمغه فإذا هو زاهق ولكم الويل مما تصفون وقال سبحانه وتعالى وقل جاء الحق وزهق الباطل إن الباطل كان زهوقا وقال سبحانه وتعالى أنزل من السماء ماء فسالت أودية بقدرها فاحتمل السيل زبدا رابيا ومما يوقدون عليه في النار ابتغاء حلية أو متاع زبد مثله كذلك يضرب الله الحق والباطل 
فأما الزبد فيذهب جفاء وأما ما ينفع الناس فيمكث في الأرض كذلك يضرب الله الأمثال فهكذا حفظكم الله ضرب الله سبحانه وتعالى في هذه الآية مثلا للحق والباطل فالحق هو الذي يبقى وهو الذي يستمر وهو الذي ينتفع به والباطل يذوب كما يذوب الملح في الماء ويزول ويضمحل ويصير زهوقا فنعم أيها الإخوة الكرام اعرف الحق واثبت عليه وتمسك به وتفقه في الدين واحمد ربك الذي من عليك بن بن بماذا بالانتساب إلى سنة رسول الله نعم الانتساب إلى سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم فإن الانتساب إلى السنة قد ورد عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كما قال في الحديث من رغب عن سنتي فليس مني ومعنى من رغب عن سنتي أي من كره سنتي وما أحبها فليس مني وأما كلمة رغبته في الشيء معناه أحببته وطلبته فيفرق بين رغبت عن الشيء ورغبت في الشيء فرغبت عن الشيء أي تركته وكرهته وأما رغبت في الشيء فمعناه أحببته وطلبته فقول النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم من رغب عن سنتي فليس مني معناه أي من كره سنتي فليس مني نعم أيها الإخوة الكرام فتمسكوا بالسنة وحافظوا عليها بطاعة الله سبحانه والبعد عن معصية الله قال النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى وسلم فعليكم بسنتي وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعدي تمسكوا بها وعضوا عليها بالنواجذ وإياكم ومحدثات الأمور فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار نعم أيها الإخوة الكرام فهكذا الحفاظ على سنة رسول الله التي هي تزكية للنفوس كما قال ربنا في كتابه الكريم هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم السنة تزكية للقلوب والأرواح والأخلاق فإن النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم هو القائل إنما بعثت لأتمم مكارم الأخلاق نعم بارك الله فيكم فالله الله في هذا الخير أعني السنة والتمسك بها والثبات عليها والاستمرار في ذلك والحذر من الكسل 
ومن الغفلة فإن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول اللهم إني أعوذ بك من القسوة والغفلة ويقول في حديث آخر إن لكل عمل شرة أي نشاط ولكل شرة فترة أي كسل فمن كانت فترته إلى سنتي فقد اهتدى ومن كانت إلى غير ذلك فقد هلك نعم فيا أيها الإخوة الكرام هكذا علينا جميعا أن نحافظ على ما من الله عز وجل به علينا فعليكم بالتفقه في الدين فإننا في زمن كثرت فيه الفتن وكثرت فيه المحن واختلط الحابل بالنابل فلن تستطيع أن تعرف الحق وأهله إلا إذا تفقهت وعرفت الحق حتى تعرف هذا الحق فإنك إذا عرفت الحق عرفت أهل الحق والرجال يعرفون بالحق ولا يعرف الحق بالرجال نعم بارك الله فيكم فإياك أن تحتقر نفسك لا تحتقر نفسك ما دام أن الله أكرمك بالسنة بالإسلام بالعلم بالقرآن فأنت لست حقير إياك إياك أن يأتيك الشيطان فيسول لك أو يزين لك أنك يعني ضيعت نفسك وأنك مهمش وأنك حقير نعم هذه طرق الشيطان فإن الله إذا قد من عليك بالدين فإنها أعظم نعمة قال الله في كتابه الكريم ممتنا على عباده بهذه النعمة اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا فنسأل الله لنا ولكم التوفيق والسداد والهداية والإرشاد فهذا ما ننصح إخواننا حفظهم الله بما سمعوا بما وبما يسره الله من الاستمساك بالكتاب والسنة واتفقوا في دين الله وهكذا أيضا حفظكم الله الحرص على مجالسة الصالحين والبعد عن مجالسة الشر فإن الجيش الصالح يعينك على الخير وإحضر الجيش السيء وأكتفي بهذا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا بارك الله فيكم فضيلة طيب ضع بعضها بسرعة <تصفيق> طيب بدون إحراج يا شيخ إذا كان عندك وقت نضع بعض الأسئلة إن شاء الله بس إذا كان الوقت عندك ضيق نختار إن شاء الله ما منها من إن شاء الله المهمة الذي يحتاج إليها بعض الإخوة طيب اختار بعض طيب اختار ما يا سيارة الله سائل يسأل ما حكم من يريد إخراج المكائن التي قد يضعها الدكاترة في مثلا قلبه ورئتيه وفي داخله ويسأل هل يجوز إخراجها عندما يقبر أو عندما مثلا يدفن هذا الميت وهو مسلم أو يجوز يعني إخراج هذه المكائن لكي ينتفع بها يعني الآخرين لكي يجدون الإحصائيات ويجدون العلوم فيما بعد هل فهمت السؤال يا شيخ؟ نعم نعم بارك الله فيك 
أصنع من كان هذه المكائن التي هي في جسم الإنسان وهم بحاجة إليها وهي مال ينفع فلا بأس من إخراجها حتى لا تصير عبثا وتهدر عبثا والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عندما ظل عقد عائشة وكان في غزوة وقف الجيش للبحث للبحث عن ذلك العقد فإذا كان إخراج هذه المكائن بدون أن يتضر هذا الميت وبدون أن يكسر له عظم وبدون أن يشوه أو يحصل له شيء من هذا فلا بأس إن شاء الله تفضل هل ينزل هذا القضية هل ينزل منزلة الضرس أو الضرس من الذهب نفس حكم نفس الحكم يا ينزل هذا المنزلة ما دام هذا الجهاز نافع نعم طيب بارك الله فيك سائل يسأل هل الأصل في الناس السنة أي عوام أهل السنة هل الأصل فيهم أنهم على سنة وفيهم مثلا لا يدخل فيهم أكيد الروافض والمبتدعة وغير ذلك فهل يجوز الإنسان أن يقول عوام أهل السنة أو يدخل العوام في تحت مظلة السنة ومن قال في هذا القول هذا الذي يظهر بارك الله فيك أنه يختلف باختلاف المناطق والبلدان على حسب منطقة المنطقة التي المجتمع فيها يعني مثلا عندنا في اليمن الأصل السنة حتى طرأ التشيع عندما أدخله يحيى بن حسين الهادي ثم أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول كل مولود يولد على الفطرة فأبواه يهودانه أو ينصرانه أو يمجسانه فينظر بعض البلدان ما هو الأصل فيها والله المستعان بارك الله فيك مفضل الشيخ آه السؤال يقول أو سائل سائل يسأل هل يجوز الجمع بين بعض الألعاب التي تقام للشباب وبين الدعوة إلى الله عز وجل مثلا يريد بسؤاله مثلا أن يجمع الإنسان بين الدعوة إلى الله عز وجل وبين أن يجمع الشباب على رياضات معينة وهكذا أن مثلا يعمل برنامج ويجمع بين الدعوة وبين الألعاب هل يجوز ذلك؟ إن كانت هذه الألعاب لا تخالف الشريعة الإسلامية الغراء وليس فيها تشبه وليس فيها منكرات فلا بأس إن شاء الله سبحانه وتعالى والتشدس الدين المذموم هو تحريم شيء أحله الله أو تحليل شيء حرمه الله والله يقول ما جعل عليكم في الدين من حرج وقال سبحانه يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر وقد كان أهل الحبشة يلعبون في مسجد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو ينظر إليهم بل جعل زوجته عائشة تنظر إليهم أيضا فيكون بهذا الضابط لا بأس والله المستعان بارك الله فيكم فضيلة الشيخ سؤال يقول سائل يسأل هل تعد هذه الأحداث التي هي حاصلة في بعض بلدان المسلمين هل تعد من النوازل وهل يجوز مشاركة الإيمان فيها يعني في الدعاء إذا كانت تعد من النوازل خاصة وهو يدعو على أولياء الأمور لا يدعو لهم بل يدعو عليهم وكذلك يدعو أيضا لعامة الناس في تلك البلاد وهل يجوز تخصيص بالدعوة أو هل يجوز 
تخصيص بلد عن آخر وهل يجوز تخصيص صلاة من دون الصلوات الأخرى أي أنه يقنط أو للنوازل أو يدعو عفوا النوازل في بعض الفرائض دون الأخرى نرجو منكم الإفادة وجزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيك هذه لا, لا تعتبر من النوازل ما دام هو يدعو على أولياء أمور المسلمين وعلى حكام المسلمين بل هذا يعتبر مخالفا لمنهج السلف فإن الإمام أحمد رحمه الله يقول لو كا لو أعلم أنني دعوة مستجابة لدعوة للسلطان ويقول كذلك الفضيل بن عياض لو أعلم أنني دعوة مستجابة لدعوة للسلطان فمعتقد أهل السنة والجماعة في مسألة ثلاثة أمور طاعة في طاعة الله وعدم طاعة في معصية الله وإعانة على الخير وإن حصل منهم شيء يدعى لهم بالهداية أما الأحداث الموجودة هذه فإنها مخالفة للشريعة تماما لما فيها من الفوضى والفتنة وسفك الدماء وخلخلة أوضاع المسلمين وزعزعة أمنهم واستقرارهم وهذا مما يفرح الأعداء هذه تصرفات مما تفرح الأعداء فلا يكون ذلك وبالنسبة للنوازل لا تكون النوازل إلا إذا كان ضرع المسلمين وأفتى العلماء بأنها نازلة وكذلك يكون بإرشاد وتوجيه أو بموافقة لأولياء الأمور المسلمين الصالحين في هذا وهذا بعض الشيء ومعلوم بارك الله فيك أهمية الانضباط سكينة فقد ذكر الشيخ محمد بن عبد الوهاب النجدي في رسالة له الأصول الستة أن من أسباب الاجتماع والاعتصام والاتحاد طاعة ولاة الأمور في طاعة الله سبحانه وتعالى وما يحصل اليوم في بلدان المسلمين يعني هنالك أيادي وراء من أعداء الإسلام لضعاف المسلمين والله المستعان تفضل بارك الله فيكم فضيلة الشيخ سؤال هل يجوز لنا أن نسمح لأطفالنا أو ندعهم يلعبون مع أولاد غير المسلمين أولاد الكفار وهم صغار أولاد الجيران وهكذا قد يجتمعون في خارج البيت ويلعبون مع أولاد جيرانهم وهم من غير المسلمين هل يجوز ذلك وهل يجوز لنا أو يسمح لنا أن ندع أولادنا يلعبون معهم بارك الله فيك الله النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول كل مولود يولد على الفطرة أبواه يهودانه أو ينصراني أو يمجسانه والولد ينبغي الاعتناء بتربيته فإنه يتأثر بالأخلاق والمعاملة والحركات وكذلك يتأثر بما يشاهد فإذا أبعدهم الإنسان عن أولاد الكفار هذا كان أولى ويجب على الأب أن يعتني بهم وأن يبعدهم حتى لا يتأثر ببعض أخلاقهم حفاظا على فطرتهم وكذلك تربيتهم ويقول الشاعر وينشأ الناس الفتيان فينا على ما كان عوده أبوه فالحرص على تربية الأولاد في غاية الأهمية والله المستعان وأكتفي بهذا والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا بارك الله فيكم نستودعكم الله نستودعكم الله يسلمكم الله نسأل الله يجعل ميزان حسناتكم ويثيبكم جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, we will begin a translation from the lecture in which Fulid al Shaykh Abd al Razak al Nihmi, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His mercy and His blessing that He bestowed upon us, granted us the opportunity to be a part of 
Shaykh Hafizahullah, he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all the worlds, and he bear witness and testify that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone, without any partners. And he bear witness and testify that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is his servant and messenger. And he said to proceed that from the great favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us, and from the great blessings that he bestowed upon us, this is blessing of Islam, blessing also of the sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in what translates and what it means. And we do not have a blessing and a provision except that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us in what translates and what it means. And if you try to count the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us, they are infinite and countless. However, verily the human being has done himself wrong and is very ungrateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us in what translates and what it means. From the ayat in which the Shaykh Hafizahullah mentioned to us, he says that do you not see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the people, do you not see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us these skies and this earth, these heavens and these earths, and he indulged us in every type of blessing and provision whether we can see it or whether we can't, whether it is clear to us or whether it is hidden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here clarifying to us the status of the ni'mah and the provisions and the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us being very abundant, being abundantly clear, being many being numerous, and of course, and no doubt, Islam and the Sunnah are from those great blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us. And from them, the Shaykh Hafizullah continues, he says, is this knowledge, the knowledge which is beneficial. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tells us in a hadith in what it means that whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants any good in him, that he will give him this fiqh and understanding of the religion. So the Prophet Muhammad mentioned to us that whoever Allah wants any good in him, meaning there isn't any good in anyone who does not have understanding of this religion, fiqh in it. So this ilm and this knowledge is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's also considered a means in which Allah can elevate you and raise you above those who have it not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in what translates and what it means. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates those of you who believe. However, He elevates even higher and levels those who have knowledge and are learned. And so, this knowledge is a means in which its people can be elevated with it, with this knowledge. He receives the guidance. He receives the light. He can tell tell between the Tawheed and the Shirk. He can tell the difference between the Sunnah and the Bid'ah and so forth and so on. The people of knowledge are the ones who place the matters in its rightful position, in its rightful places. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what translates and what it means. That those of you will not know the reality of the matter except those who have knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us what translates and what it means. And those individuals who have been given the knowledge, they, were, they are the ones that will know that this is the truth from their Lord. So these ayahs clearly testify to whoever is upon knowledge and upon this ilm. He's the one that will have the guidance and the light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in what translates and what it means. Is he the same? Or could you compare that individual who has been 
in the darkness and evil. Meaning his soul has been dead. Could you compare him with that individual that we have gave nur and a light to walk between and among the people? You can never compare between that individual who has the light to see clearly and that individual who is walking in the depths of darkness and evil as if he is dead with no life of this guidance. And so with this ilm, with this knowledge, the individual knows the reality between or can tell the difference between the truth and the falsehood, the sunnah and the bid'ah, he also will know who are those individuals that are upon sunnah and who are those individuals who are upon bid'ah and falsehood. He will know who is the true scholar from that individual who is upon ignorance, claims that he is upon the truth. Shaykh Hafizullah continues and says, and we also advise ourselves and you with this knowledge after establishing sincerity and ikhlas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, total righteousness and piety, and conforming to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His will, learning this beneficial knowledge. For verily we are in a time that many people claim that they're upon this truth or that they are the saved people or the saved sect. But we have many individuals who fell to partisanship, fell to deviations and newly invented matters in the religion, and fell to division. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in what translates and what it means that they have cut their matters and they split themselves up into different sects. Every sect is happy what they are upon. The Shaykh Allah mentions to us the house of poetry in which everyone claims that they have a connection to Layla. However, Layla does not confirm this connection to them or between her and them. And so, there are many people who claim that they are upon the truth, upon the sunnah, upon the proper ideology of Islam. However, this is not the reality. And so they make themselves look to be the ones that are upon the truth and upon the sunnah. However, they are not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in what translates and what it means. For those individuals who deceive the people and concealed the truth from the people. The Jews in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in regards to them, that how can you claim righteousness and piety and advise people? However, in reality, you are concealing this truth and you know it. And you know it. You know that the truth is being concealed because you don't want to bring it out to the people. So they know your reality. And so, likewise, the people of innovation... They come with these falsehoods and these newly invented matters and these innovations in the religion to deviate the people and lead them astray. As it was mentioned to one of the prophets and the messengers, as his people told him, did you come to us with truth or are you from those who is just playing around? Also, like Fir'aun, when... He was showing himself to his people and acting like he was upon the truth as he told his people, Oh my people, this individual, meaning he's talking about Musa and trying to deter them from following him. He's saying in regards to Musa that verily, I will not guide you except to that guidance in which is the truth, in which is the most upright. See how Fir'aun is misleading his people, claiming that he is upon good and upon righteousness, and that he is the one who is upon the straight path. After telling them, also mentioning to them and saying that he is verily their Lord, 
who was all high, also telling them, oh, my people, I fear for you. That, meaning Musa, will change your religion, change your way of life, and he will cause corruption in your land. This is Fir'aun. The Pharaoh, which is the most evil people that stepped on the face of this earth. He tries to mention to his people and to mislead them that he is actually a person who is upon goodness and righteousness and piety. Trying to make a false image of himself that he is upon this guidance and this light. And when we all know Musa is the one who was given the guidance and given the revelation. However, this did not stop Fir'aun from trying to mislead his people and try to make this image of himself being better and upon the truth and that Musa is the actual evil one. However, Shaykh Hafizullah mentions and says, continues, however, whatever that they may do, those individuals who are upon corruption and evil, with their evil and their falsehood, whatever they do, and how much they ever strive, then it is no doubt, however, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove and erase this falsehood and this evil with the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and what translates to what it means. However, we will overwhelm and bring the truth on the falsehood. Meaning, so it will crack it over its head and it will break it. And woe be to those from what they try to describe or ascribe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily the truth has come and the bottle and the falsehood has dissolved and went away. Verily the bottle and the falsehood and evil is from those matters in which will be done away with. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made many examples in the Quran in regards to the comparison, comparing between the truth and the falsehood. So truth will stay and it will continue and it will be beneficial to the people. However, bottle and falsehood this is what will dissolve like salt dissolves in water and it will be erased and done away with. And so, the Shaykh Hafizullah mentions and he advises us in himself to know the truth and be steadfast upon it and hold on to it with our molar teeth. We should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gave us this blessing, gave us the blessing of being from those from the sunnah upon the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for verily to go back to and be upon the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is the matter in which is very blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in a hadith that whoever raghaba an sunnati falaysa minni man raghaba an sunnati falaysa minni whoever turns away from my sunnah, then he is not from me. And whoever dislikes my sunnah is not from me. Whoever hates it and did not like it, did not approve of it, has something in his heart for it, he is not from us. And the Shaykh Hafiz Allah, he gives us some fawaiz and some benefits in regards to the applied linguistics, some grammarian information in regards to the difference of raghiba an and raghiba fi, regards to the different understandings of the word. Like if an individual will say, or raghibtu an is shay, meaning, I left it because I did not like it. However, if the individual says, Zaghibtu fishay, meaning, I surely liked it and I seek it. 
So the difference of using an or fi with the word raghiba or raghibtu. And so the statement of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentions here and he says, however, raghiba an, meaning whoever disliked or disapproved or hated the sunnah or my sunnah, then he's not from me. And so, Shaykh Hafizullah says, my fellow brothers and sisters in Islam, hold on to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by upholding the laws and the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and veering away and steering away from those matters in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to stay away from and disapproved of, staying away from the sins and the, and the evils and the falsehood, not falling victim to the whispers of the shaitan. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tells us, and so you should hold on to my sunnah and the sunnah of the guided righteous khalifa after me. Hold on to that. Hold on to that sunnah. Hold on to my sunnah and their sunnah with your molar teeth. And beware of the newly invented matter in the religion. For every newly invented matter in the religion is an innovation. Every innovation is a misguidance. And all misguidances are in the hellfire. And so, holding on to the sunnah also purifies the soul. Purifies the very nature of the human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and what translates to what it means that verily Allah is the one who sent to the ummiyeen, sent to the unlettered nation, to the unlettered people a prophet and a messenger from them to recite to them and relate to them the ayat and the proofs and the revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his words where you zakih him and to purify them and so With this revelation of the Quran and the Sunnah, purify your soul. With it, you purify your heart, purify your etiquettes and your manners, and purify every aspect of your life. As, Allah, as the Prophet Muhammad tells us, that verily I have been revealed to, and I have been sent to you so I can fulfill the best of character and manners. And so, he says, Allah, Allah, he asked us in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we uphold the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and be upon it and veer not away from it and that we should stay away from any matter in which may make us lazy or may make us turn away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and upholding his sharia and his legislation or the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he mentions the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the supplicating form in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking refuge from al-ghafla from that in which can put us in a time in which we will forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our duty to him to put us and giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due credit along with the legislation that he has passed for us and ordained. He mentions also the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, for every action, there is a time in which an individual may become lazy in it. Or, he mentions and he says, for every action, there is a time in which you become very energetic to fulfill that action. And for every time that is done, sometimes laziness befalls us and comes to us. And we slack off. He said, however, if an individual slacks off to the sunnah, then this individual is the one who has been guided. And even if there's matters in which an individual becomes forgetful, he doesn't forget completely what he has to do pertaining to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the son of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam however this indicates that an individual's iman level might increase and decrease however he shouldn't forget completely and allow his ghafla allow his state of forgetfulness to make him 
fall into the means of being from those from the dwellers of the hellfire. And so the Shaykh Hafizullah continues and mentions, he says that it is incumbent upon all of us that we learn this religion. For verily we're in a time where innovations and darkness befall the people. And everything is mixed and conscrewed. Everything or a lot of things are unclear. There's not much clarity. There's a lot of confusion. Some people don't know where's the truth or who has the truth or who's upon it. You don't know who's upon this truth from those who are upon misguidance and evil. So he said that the men are known by their upholding the truth. And the truth is not known by the men. Meaning we don't pass judgment that the people are upon the truth because of the person. However, we pass judgment upon the people if they are upholding this truth. So the Shaykh Hafizullah, he mentions, and he says that, do not belittle yourself and degrade yourself. For verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided you to the Qur'an and to the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, understanding of the righteous predecessors. Do not allow the shaytan to mislead you or to whisper to you and have these satanic whispers in which might make you fall into error or confusion or relaxation or in a status in which you will be in total forgetfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to whisper to you that you are lost and you are from those individuals who there is no good in there is no good in you or there is nothing beneficial that comes out of you An individual should always aim high and have full dependence and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with this religion he has surely blessed you with something that is very very great and honorable Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and what translates and what it means that verily today I have fulfilled for you your religion I've completed it for you and I've bestowed upon you my provision and my blessing and I've approved for you this Islam as a way of life and as a religion so he says in conclusion this is what we advise ourselves and you to be upon asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for complete aid and help and sustenance and provision and we also advise our fellow brothers and sisters that to stay away from those individuals who may lead us astray from the innovators or those individuals who remind us of the sins and the evil matters and the falsehoods and that we should always uphold those friends or keep those friends in which are good and righteous upon the sunnah so they can remind us and advise us upon this truth and upon this patience and then therefore we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the Shaykh Hafizullah for giving us from his time and sharing with us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows for him to share with us and then we went on to ask him some of the questions in which it seemed like the Shaykh Hafizullah didn't have much time however we tried to squeeze in as much as the questions as possible from them or well, the first question that we posed to him is what is the judgment passed pertaining to those individuals who may be buried with defibrillators or other mechanical devices whether it is permissible for them to get buried with them or take them out and the Shaykh Hafizullah he says that if these mechanical devices are needed like to do further research and can benefit the people then he sees no problem with those mechanical devices you know be taken out of this deceased individual he said however if an individual this does not cause him to break many bones or they do not break many bones and cause much harm to the body whether they be certain type of mutilation or they will be surgery in which 
will kind of change the nature of the body and whatnot, mutilate it to the point where it will not be something that is to, is to be advised to do so. And he mentioned, he says that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, for those things and those matters in which are needed, and there's many, or there's a benefit to it, he mentioned that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stopped a whole army in regards to finding the necklace of Aisha radiallahu anha. And so he says also this judgment is passed pertaining also to that tooth of gold and whatnot. Maybe an individual or he's not to be buried even with this tooth of gold. And so the judgment is passed with the same judgment that is passed pertaining to the gold tooth. And it falls under the same category. The other question that we pose to the Shaykh, Hafizahullah, is, is the origin in the people that they are people of the Sunnah, meaning, are the people originally from Ahl Sunnah, or is it known to be otherwise? The Shaykh Hafizahullah, he says, this depends on the place, the country, or the region. He said, for example, like here, us in Yemen, most of the people of Yemen are upon Sunnah. He said, until the deviant Shia came to a certain part of the region and started spreading their evil and their tashayyah and their falsehood. And then the Shaykh Hafidullah mentions the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi which states that every child that is born, he is born upon fitrah. He is born, born upon a predisposition a predisposition in which makes him from the ones who submit their will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however their parents either make them into Jews or make them into Christians or make them into fire worshippers or those who follow the ways and the signs of the stars and whatnot. And so he said that this all goes back to the nature of the region. Whether it is known to be a region or a country of the Sunnah, then the awam or the common folk and the laymen are to be considered from awam ahl sunnah or from the common folk of ahl sunnah The other question that we posed to the Shaykh, Hafidullah, we mentioned that is it permissible for individuals to bring the da'wah together with youth activities and whatnot, meaning to have youth activities along with calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Hafidullah, he says that if there isn't any haram or wrongdoing in these activities, then this is permissible. And there's no emulating and imitating of the kuffar and whatnot, then this is perfectly fine. And he says that there are those, there are some people who are very extreme in regards to these views in which are very normal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and what translates to what it means. Allah did not make a burden upon us in this religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and what translates to what it means that verily Allah wants to have us be in ease and not have us be upon these hardships and to be harsh. He was mentioned and he mentioned also the Shaykh Hafizahullah that the people of Abyssinia were playing in his masjid. In the masjid of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was looking at them and watching them play in his masjid. Also allowed even I, Sallallahu Anha, to watch them play. And so, he said if these activities, as long as there is nothing going against the legislation of Islam, then he sees nothing or no problem with doing so. The other question that we pose to the Shaykh Hafizahullah is... Are these, or one of the questions is, is it permissible for us to allow our children to play with the children of the non-believers in the kuffar? Then the Shaykh Hafizullah reminds us of the hadith that we would just mention in regards to the other question, that every child is born upon a natural disposition. Either his parents turn him into Jews or Christians, or turn him into fire worshippers and whatnot. And he says, so the parents, they should be, 
very concerned with raising their children a proper rising, raising them upon good manners and good etiquettes. He said, in regards to these individuals who allow their children to play with the kids of the non-believers, he, said, he doesn't recommend this to be done. And to allow them just to intermingle with the Muslims, this is a lot better. He said, because this might affect the children in their characters and manners. Hence, the children of the kuffar and the non-believers lack manners and etiquettes. And so, he fears for the children that the etiquettes of the kuffar will rub off on their children. And so he advises not to, for this action not to be done. And the question, and the last question that we will address, and there wasn't any more questions that we posed to the shaykh, for he excused himself and he wanted to finish and wrap up the session with him. We asked the shaykh, Hafizullah, are these events that are taking place in the Muslim world today considered from the nawazil, considered from those matters in which are concerned to be or called from those devastations that fall upon a nation? And is it permissible for us to join the imam if he makes dua or supplication against the leaders of the nations and the heads of state? He doesn't pray for them, that Allah give them guidance, however he prays against them and harshly upon them. While he also is making dua for the common folk and the laymen of those nations, is it permissible to join the imam in this type of dua or this type of supplication? And is it considered from the nawazil or the devastations that befall a nation? Shaykh Hafizullah he says that these events that are taking place, they are not considered from the nawazil and from the devastations that occur upon a nation. Especially when this imam is calling and supplicating against the leaders and the heads of state. It was mentioned by Imam Ahmed, also by al fadail ibn Iyad, that they used to say, if I had a supplication that would be heard and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would allow that prayer, or I would wish that that prayer would be for the imam, for the leader, for the head of the state. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers his prayer for him. Meaning that he will become righteous and pious in which the nation will benefit from him. And from this dua. So he said, Ahl sunnah the people that are upon the sunnah, they are the ones who pray for their heads of state and for their leaders, not against them. But as for these events that are taking place today, these are all, and this is all being done in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not individuals who fall under these trials and tribulations and what is to be done during these times of trials and tribulations. He said, however, all this that is being done is to bring chaos and turmoil to the people, allow them to live in uncertainty and in confusion, allow them to live under these harsh conditions and in war, in war-torn countries and whatnot. He said, there is no good in demolishing and demonstrating and protesting and burning and looting and what for and so forth and so on. And so, Shaykh Hafizullah mentions and he says, it is known that you can only get order except with tranquility and peace. And as he mentioned, the statement of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab at Tamimi, the statement of which says that from the means of coming together and being stronger is the obedience to the heads of state and to the leaders. And so, so he says and refutes this false ideology pertaining to those individuals who are taking part in whatever it is that is going on in the Muslim world today. And so the Shaykh Hafizullah mentions to us that this is not from the ideology of Ahl-Sunnah al-Jama'ah 
and it's not the proper way to resolve this issue and these issues. And so the Shaykh Hafizahullah excused himself, and by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will have Abdul Ghani al Umari next week, Sunday, same time, through the same channels, inshallah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and you from what we heard. And we, may, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us and you from those who follow revelation to the best of their ability. Wa sallallahu wa sallam obviously Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. If there was anything correct, it was from Allah. And if there was anything that was not correct, it was from myself, from my lack of having the proper maybe translation and from the deficiencies of myself and from the shaitan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all those who took part and are taking part or had anything to do with these lectures and these classes. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our acts in their sincere. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.